Hi, good afternoon, Sarah Picaro, Rapid Transformational Therapist, and today we're gonna to talk about baiting and what baiting is. So I want you to, as we talk about this, just picture in your mind a fisherman. So a fishing pole, and there's a hook at the end of it, and on the end of that hook is a worm, and that is cast out into the little ocean or pond or lake, whatever, and you are swimming. You are the fish and you are swimming, and the narcissist is the fisherman. So think about that analogy as we talk about baiting today and what it is. So maybe you're at that place where you're finally in your life and you realized, okay, this relationship that I am in or I was in is not healthy. You've gotten out or you've realized how toxic it is and how sickening it is because you're realizing how horribly depressed, miserable, stressed, unhappy you are and you're at this place where I need to figure out why, what, what's going on because I'm normally a happy, caring, loving, uh, kind, empathetic person and I'm uh, what's going on? So you're doing this research and you finally figure out, okay, I have a narcissist in my life or you're stuck in a relationship with a narcissist and you're learning about all these things and these concepts and you you see the hoovering, you see the gaslighting, you see the discard, and there's also this other term called baiting. So what is this? And it kind of goes along with all of that. So you realize that you have been discarded, you've been devalued, you've been undermined, and the narcissist in your life has had so much power over you and you're finally wanting to get to a point where you take your power back. So as a primary driver in this narcissistic relationship, they use a lot of different techniques, tools, and things to get you. And one of these is baiting. And this is another technique to keep you engaged so that they can win, dominate, have power and control over you because you are a force of supply. Think about it, if a fisherman was out there fishing all the time, throwing out bait and uh, no fish ever caught on to it, they would go hungry and die. So they rely on the fish that they catch, they rely on the baiting, they rely on their supply to live. And it creates this imbalance of power when they're always up here and they're superior and you're down here because they're constantly belittling you, undermining you, it creates this imbalance of power and nobody likes that feeling where they constantly feel like they're down here and they haven't improved themselves. And this shows up maybe in the relationship with the narcissist but impacts your relationships with your family, with your friends, with your job. You realize, okay, this is going on in all areas of my life and you want to start to balance out that power and take your power back maybe so that you're at least even and you can have a healthy, loving relationship. But you realize that with the narcissist, this is not happening. The scale never balances out, never tips out. It's always like this, them up here, you down here. And they employ different tactics to keep you down here and them up here. Uh, one of these is maybe they make fun of a physical quality that they know that you're insecure about. Like my ex used to make fun of my smile and my face and my eye does this wonky thing. And he'll sometimes, or used to, we don't talk anymore, but he used to go, oh really? And make fun of me because he knows that I was like immediately be crushed and like say stop. So maybe they say things about what you're wearing or your appearance or your character like they'll say things oh yeah that's that sure looks a little tighter well, looks a little tighter around the hips don't you think and you're thinking okay and then that deeply triggers your insecurity because it's just like well shit it's COVID I haven't been working out as much I remember when my ex-husband and I were getting divorced and I went over to his house to pick up some stuff and I had a friend who had a truck with me and I mean I was highly insecure. I used to work out like three hours a day and not eat, like almost to the point where I was anorexic and was like 120 pounds. I'm 5'7", so that's tiny. And I tried to push up on the back of the truck and it like, I had to like, like use my hands. And, and he made a comment about that. Oh, not working out as much, I see. And it just crushed me. So they'll say things about your looks. They'll say things about uh, your job. Like maybe they know that you're going through like a stressful time at job or maybe you're up for a promotion or raise because you've been working your butt off. And uh, they'll say things like, oh, haven't got that evaluation back yet, huh? Did you find out about your, your pay raise? And you're like, well, no, not yet. But and they're like, oh. Huh. So they'll constantly make little comments to devalue you. And this is actually a baiting technique. It's them throwing that line out there so that you bite on it when they say things like, 
like, oh, I haven't been working on it. You bite on it and then it leaves you feeling more insecure. It leaves you triggered and boom, again, they're up here, you're down here. And so you start to realize these patterns and then you pick up on this and then you set these boundaries. I've got some exciting books today. I had another client share with me. Thank you so much. If you're looking to date uh, boundaries in dating, and boundaries. I get asked all the time, what are some good book recommendations? So I'm going to dive into these two. Thank you to Amazon Prime. Got those this morning. Uh, anyways, <laughs> back on topic. So you'll see that when you start to set these boundaries, if you need help, again, I'm going to explore these, especially when someone is accusing you of something, especially something you haven't done. Like they'll, they'll bait you by projecting what they're doing onto you by saying, uh, oh yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're cheating on me or you're on your phone. And they'll say like, who are you on the phone with? And you're thinking, oh my gosh, really? But they're doing this to bait you, to hook you into getting into a place where you were defending yourself and you're protecting yourself. And actually when they're doing this, it's really what they're doing to you, but this is a form of baiting as well. They're provoking you. They're constantly accusing you of things that you haven't done. This ties into the gaslighting. They say things that you don't remember that how that actually happened. And you're like, no, actually I do. But that's a form of baiting as well when they get you to question your reality and what happened. So if someone is criticizing things about you, particularly like things that make you feel anxious or things that make you feel hurt about yourself, or they say things about hurtful people or hurtful things about people that you love. Like they'll belittle and say critical things about your friends. They'll think things about your family. And this is a form of baiting as well. My ex used to say, yeah, what do your friends know? Look at your friends, they're low lives, they're losers. And my friends were educated, happily married people, but he would belittle them and put them down. And that was him throwing that line out there so that I would immediately get triggered and react and defend them. Like, you don't even know them. They're actually much better than you because blah, 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 blah. And he would go, oh, really? Well, my boys. And then start talking about how much better him and his friends were than my friends. That's a form of baiting as well. You start to see all this happening. You start to realize the ways that you are being baited and you try to manage the narcissist because you try to just, if you don't engage, if you keep quiet, if you shut down, maybe they'll stop. The thing is they're never gonna stop. This is just who they are. And they go after the people that you care about most because they know exactly where your triggers are. They know exactly what they have to say to immediately get you to flare up, respond, react. And then they sit back with this smirk on their face like, <laughs> look at you. Do you see you? Do you see how crazy you are? Do you see what I have to put up with? And again, that shifts the scale, the dynamic that they're up here, you are down here. And you're almost always guaranteed to have an extremely strong emotional reaction to them. And that is why they use this baiting technique. It's why they throw it out there because they know exactly what to say to get you to raise your voice, to get you to cry, to get you to yell, to get you to be agitated. And it's very, very clear that you're going to get upset and come unhinged. And they love this because again, it tips the scales in their favor. Look how crazy you are. All I said was that your friends don't know what they're talking about and that's true look and then they'll throw out all these reasons why and you're sitting there crying because they're your friends <laughs> and then you isolate from them because then you're sitting there thinking later on maybe they're right what if they're right and then that's a form of isolating them isolating you from those friends to get them to have more power and control so what becomes the matter with this well you start to look like you're crazy you start to feel and believe that you have mental problems that you need help you need to go to a doctor you need counseling you're too sensitive all these things you know the drill and their negative critical voice gets stuck in your head and you really really truly start to believe that there's something wrong with you because you have been baited so many times they've thrown that out there and then this anger that you have towards them you start to turn inward and you get mad at yourself why can't I figure this out maybe he's right you start to think that they're right and you are wrong and then you get angry at yourself and every time they get you to react you get even more angry at yourself because you're thinking well god they're right look I'm, I am I'm going crazy there is something wrong with me I do need help sadly you've just been a victim of baiting and narcissistic abuse but they leave walking away happy with the smirk on their face because they are in the state of superiority and they have just proved that you're just sitting there crazy acting inappropriate and they feel the sense of relief. 
almost like they got off on it because they did because they always get the power by having the upper hand while they can sit back and remain completely non-emotional calling you out and then walking away and that's what this whole baiting thing is and it's extremely dangerous and it's always 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 designed to get to have you in, provoke and induce an emotional response, have you flare up and react and escalate this. And the more they do it, the easier it becomes and the more damage it does to you because it just further validates that they're right about you and you're crazy. And they keep pushing the envelope and the cruelty of things that they say until they get an adequate rise out of you. So you may start to realize this and go, you know what, I'm gonna gray rock and you great rock, or you no contact, or you break up, and you just sit there and go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. -hmm, mm, -hmm, mm. And gray rock is okay, it's a good technique, but they do this and they'll bait and bait and bait and they up the ante until finally you crack and you can't gray rock anymore and you like, you know what? And you come after them and you just explode. And then the cycle perpetuates and continues. They sit back and go, oh, wow. Do you see you right now? This is exactly what I'm talking about. You're freaking crazy. And you realize they just do it again and again and again. And then they sprinkle some love bombing in. And then they're like, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I still love you. And you're thinking, wow, I am crazy. Thank God they still love me. Because I'm so crazy, if they don't love me, then nobody will. And those are the things that they're saying to you along the way as well. And it's just this perpetual cycle of baiting. So understand this, there is nothing wrong with you. You have had an experience of narcissistic abuse. You've been baited, you've been gaslit, you've been hoovered, you've been love bond, all these things. So I hope these videos help you and wherever you're at to realize everything that the narcissist does is a form of tossing it out there to get you to bite the bait, to hook you back in. And in doing that, they get you to emotionally erupt and, res and respond to all the crazy, horrible things that they're saying to tip the scales to keep you down here and you up here. And when you start to go no contact or you start to gray rock or you start to establish boundaries, it takes their power away and they don't like that. So they're going to up the ante to tip the scales again. So be careful of this. Be careful of this because you can almost be blindsided by the gaslighting and the hoovering and all the love bombing thinking, well, they really do love me. And all it is, it's all connected and related and it's all a form of baiting to get you to stay in, to suck you back in so that they can maintain that power and control and you stay down here feeling horrible about yourself. So please know this, don't, don't take the bait. See it, don't take it. And the best, obviously the best contact is no contact, but if you can't, I mean, my ex and I have very minimal contact, email only and zero emotion. Uh, someone mentioned before, it's like a business transaction. It's very much like that. Here's the fact, thank you. Here's the fact, thank you. There's zero emotional response anymore because anytime the bait's thrown out there, I now realize that I was baited tremendously and now I see myself as like the little fish swimming by going, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I don't want to see the fisherman on the other end of that pole. So I hope that this that video and information helps you. The way to go within and heal after having been with them is first to realize what you're experiencing and not stay in the victim role of like, oh, this happened to me or my narc. First of all, stop calling them your narc if you don't want them, call them the narc. There's a connection between using ownership words. So say the narc, it's them, they're over there and you are not a part of them. You are you and you deserve to be happy. You deserve to live free from all this craziness and understand what it was that they were doing to you psychologically, mentally, and spiritually. They were crushing every part of you. So awareness is the first step of understanding, okay, yeah, I was getting baited. And then get out of that relationship, move towards healing, move towards using resources. Like if you need help, boundaries, I'll let you guys know what I think about it. I just got it today, I haven't read it yet. Um, and then really, really start to go within and heal. And that's where I connect and work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis and would love to work with you in that as well. But first of all, it takes understanding what you've gone through. So please don't take the hook, be a satisfied fish and don't bite the worm.
<laughs> and in that, know that you are enough. Thank you guys. We'll connect soon.